Well, good morning, everyone. The Delaware County Commissioner meeting for January 11, 2018 is now in session. Would you stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and the Senate Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, good morning, everyone. I'm President of the Board, Carrie Merrill, and to my right is Commissioner Barb Lewis, our Vice President, and to my right is fellow Commissioner Jeff Benton. Sarah DeNova is our clerk today, and our county administrator, our administrator is uh, Mike Cromer. With that, let's begin. Resolution number 18-27, in the matter of approving the electronic record of the proceedings from regular meeting held January 8, 2018. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion, vote. Vote on motion 18-27. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Bitten? Aye. I have no public or elected comment this morning. Resolution number 18-28. A resolution affirming celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day in Delaware County. Second. Uh, so moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. A discussion? So why don't we go ahead and vote on the resolution and we'll open up for any comments. Okay. Vote on motion 18-28. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Uh, I have a resolution which I will read. I, uh, is, Commissioner, do you have any comments you want to make? Or? Just that uh, we want to uh, support the uh, and commemorate uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. on uh, next Monday. And so we've offered this, this resolution. And so you can go ahead, Gary. I will read it. Do you have any comments you want to make? No, we don't, since we don't have session on Monday, in honor of Dr. King, um, we thought this would be a great way to recognize uh, the purpose for the vacation, the holiday on Monday. I, the, the comment I would have, I, you know, there are a few events in your life that you know where you were when you heard. Uh, obviously, uh, the passing of John, John F. Kennedy was one of those dates, uh, the shuttle. Uh, and I can tell you exactly where I was when I heard about the passing of uh, Martin Luther King. Um, I was at work at a grocery store in Moore, Oklahoma, and I remember being back by the dairy areas. I was stocking shelves, and I heard the announcement. And uh, uh, Martin Luther King was a person who did it the right way. Uh, errors in the way our country was moving down the road. He put through civil disobedience. Uh, he, uh, he was a great man who uh, we all should be very proud to call a, an American, a U.S. citizen, and uh, he's done a lot for this country, He did, and he did it in the right way. Um, with that, I'd like to read uh, the resolution that we have prepared and that has been signed by the three commissioners. Whereas, on January 15, 2018, we take time in Delaware County to observe the national holiday commemorating the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And whereas we, the Board of Delaware County Commissioners, affirm this is a day when we come together as a nation and celebrate the principles of equality and justice that makes us uniquely American, and whereas we honor the sacrifices that Dr. King made in his lifetime and that so many Americans continue to make today in their work to ensure that all Americans, regardless of their differences, having access to the same rights and opportunities, and whereas we renew our commitment to honoring the dreams we share and to seeking peaceful resolutions to all conflict. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners, Delaware County, Ohio, do hereby affirm and encourage all citizens to join us in the observation of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Day in, the De in Delaware County. Signed by Commissioner Benton, Commissioner Lewis, and Commissioner Merrill. Uh, I don't know if you have any additional comments or not, but uh, no, I think it just it, it serves as a great reminder and uh, of, of Dr. King's example and leadership even today. And I think we need it uh, that reminder today more than ever. Uh, with that, that's what we're ready to move on. Thank you. Resolution number one eight dash two nine. In the matter of approving purchase orders, then announce certificates and payments of warrant to batch number CMAPR0110. So move. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion 18-29. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 18-30. In the matter of approving travel expense requests. So move. 
Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 18-30. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Bitten? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 18-31. In the matter of acknowledging receipt of annexation petition from agent for the petitioner, Andrew P. Weber, requesting annexation of 89.1, sorry, 618 acres of land in Delaware County, sorry, in Delaware Township to the city of Delaware. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 18-31. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Resolution number 18-32. In the matter of approving a contract renewal and amendment between the Delaware County Board of Commissioners, the Delaware County Board of Election, and SCS Consulting Services, LTD. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Is discussion? Hey, good morning, Mr. President, Commissioners, Administrator. Good to see you all. Everyone up watching. Um, and you are? Steve Cutler. I'm getting there. No. <laughs> Steve Cutler, uh, 1644 Shell Run Drive, Delaware, Ohio, 43015. Uh, member of the Board of Elections here in Delaware County, proud member. Uh, today I have a great honor um, <clears throat> in asking uh, for support from, from you all in regards to uh, this contract and specifically to um, uh, General Sam Kindred. Uh, just a little background. We've kind of done this before, and then I know Peg Watkins, another member of the board, is here, and Carla, our director, is here as well to add any insight. Um, prior to assisting us with security measures and uh, investigations and things that are critical at the Board of Elections, uh, Sam volunteered uh, for many years at the Board of Elections and was, uh, was always a key component. And even today, I would say that his involvement is critical to our operation, everything that he does, especially on the election security side. <clears throat> but I think it's a little more important to dig down as, you know, prior um, to Sam uh, getting involved here in the Board of Elections, as Sam had a, as a retired uh, Brigadier General of the United States Army active duty um, and has served um, 28 years. 33. Um, <laughs> um, and I think an interesting thing, as a veteran myself and as a reservist, I, one of the things that brings, um, that brings a lot of respect to Sam is he started his military career as an enlisted soldier and rose through the ranks, became commissioned, and ultimately retired as a brigadier general. After that, he also served um, at the United States Senate, um, running their security. And then we're blessed to have him here in Delaware County. He's been critical um, to our success. Peg, or Carl, if you guys have any savings. I'm Peg Watkins. I don't know if you need my address and everything, but I am a member of the Board of Elections. And I just wanted to second what Steve said about um, the level of expertise that we have in Sam Kindred is really exceptional, especially for a county of this size. So I just want to say how fortunate we are to have him. And when we read what's going on in the news with elections, I feel confident that Sam's on it. And we either have already been protected or he's going to get on it and change whatever needs to be changed to make sure that we have the most secure voting system in the world. So that's what I have to say. I'm looking forward to your insights that he said you would have for us. <laughs> I'm going to do my best. My name is Carla Heron, Director of the Board of Elections. Um, I think I'd like to add that I know we were in our yearly association conference this week, and we got a call from our seasonal staff that said, you know, the power was out here in Delaware County. And it made me think if it would have been Election Day, I just wanted to assure the commissioners that in Delaware County, if it would have been Election Day and the power would have been out, um, we have a plan that if – of course, first and foremost, we have backup uh, batteries on our voting equipment. So they would run for a few hours. But Sam has put together a plan. Would, it didn't, doesn't matter what polling location. If there would be a powder, power outage there and it would be an extended you know, number of hours, we have a plan to relocate them to a different location. He has it mapped out, a list and things. So I'm not sure if we've ever really specifically talked about the details of that, but also Sean Miller and Brian Gallagher's team with Sam, and if something like that would happen and there is not another you know, emergency in the county that they're having to attend to, they'll be there to assist us as well. So. Okay. 
Okay. And I'm happy to answer any questions about the contract or anything if you have any. Thank you. Sam, do you have any comments? <laughs> uh, Commissioner Sam, Sam Kendrick. Uh, I have no comments. Uh, I, I'm very proud and, and, and humble that, that they have such uh, glowing comments to say about me. Uh, we're just trying to do what's right for the county. I live here, and so I, I think we should. We do have the best election system in the world, and I can definitely say it in the state because I've seen everything in the state, and uh, I'm proud to be part of, of this group. So any questions you have, I'll try to answer them for you. Any yeah, how long has this ha have you been working as a consultant with the Board of Elections here? Uh, working uh, third year now, third year, third year. Third year. Okay. yes, sir. Well, and oh, go ahead. No other questions. Anymore. Um, I had the pleasure first of, of, of meeting General Kindred uh, in Genoa Township, and and I'm I'm just so grateful that we have you here as you as you mentioned too peg i mean this level of expertise is is it's it's just not anywhere else that i know of and uh, you volunteer your time in genoa township and so you're a community volunteer invested very much vested in the community and we're just very fortunate to uh, you be able to use your expertise at the board so thank you thank general. you thank you and Commissioner Merrill, I was in Vietnam when I got word that Dr. King had died. I was one of those frustrating days where nothing went right. I was a helicopter pilot, and we came back that evening, and we were late getting in because everything went wrong that day, and there was no food for my troops. And so I was had the mess sergeant back in the back there. I was ready to shoot him, I guess, to get food, and all of a sudden we started getting bombed, and I was low crawling out of the bunker, and some guy came at me head on, and I said, Sergeant, where are you going? You're going the wrong way. He said, well, it must be because Dr. King was killed today. You've got to be kidding me. So we both stood up in the middle of a firefight. Kind of. That's where I heard about him being killed. So uh, that's uh, my story. All I want to say is, I, I guess there's no doubt in my mind, I've said this how many times, Carla, that we do it better than anybody in this state. And I've said it before, when I get to the CCO meetings, and I hear about the relationship between their boards and their commissioners, and I see day after day our relationship between our board and our commissioners. It amazes me why that doesn't exist in the other 87 counties. It seems like we all have the same purpose, and um, I applaud all of you for the job you do. Uh, you're new on the board. I assume you're enjoying, you're enjoying it. Yes. And uh, uh, we're lucky to have uh, – a great board and great leadership at the board. Yes, yeah. in all we are. And one final comment: When we first started this, I started with Secretary of State doing the voter registration automation piece, and you're so right. There was one county which I shall leave nameless. The Democrats and the Republicans had two different offices. That's how divided they were when we started this process. So I say you get in one system, so you can get get together or whatever. But you get in one system. But that's how contentious it was in certain counties. So. These guys are to be commended. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. all of you. Vote. Vote on motion 18-32. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Fitton. Aye. Resolution number 18-33. In the matter of approving the sanitary sewer improvement plan for Clark Shaw Moore, section 4. So move. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. Uh, commissioners, we have uh, for you today approval of the Clark Shaw Moore's uh, section 4 plans. Uh, I would just like to point out that uh, this is the fourth section in the Clark Shaw area. So um, I know that this is kind of the, the targeted flow for the lower side of plant. So uh, the developers are, are moving, you know, after the uh, startup of the plant and things are progressing uh, in that area. So like we were uh, anticipating and, and hoping would happen. So Good. The, plant, the plant's working. It is working. There are some things that are nothing major, but some things that are, um, you know, needing to be replaced and repaired. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, you know, when you have things sit there in place for 10 sure. years and a lot of gears and moving parts and things like that, you, after a couple months, they're, they're doing the early wear out, but uh, nothing that, that hasn't mm -hmm. kept our staff on their toes to, to make sure that they address. So. Oh, that's great. Any other questions or comments? Vote. Oh, on motion 18-33. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 18-34. In the matter of approving the second amendment to the child placement services contract between the Delaware County Board of Commissioners, the Delaware County Department of Job and Family Services, 
and child placement provider that the network village network. So moved. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Lewis. Second by Commissioner Benton. Good morning, Angela Thomas, Job and Family Services. Uh, we currently have a contract with the village network. Um, the existing contract is. Um, uh, I think 140. Yeah, it's 140 thousand dollars. We need to increase it for uh, the five youth that we currently have placed there. So we're asking for an additional 51 thousand to take us through the end of our contract, which expires March 31st. So the total new contract maximum will be 191 thousand dollars. Any questions or comments? Huh? Vote on motion 18-34. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Angel. Resolution number 18-35. In the matter of approving a contract of sale and purchase between the Thomas J. Altman and Emma J. Altman, Dan C. Baltus and the Board of County Delaware County Commissioners for DEL-CR14-1.23. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Good morning, Commissioners. Rob Riley, Chief Deputy Engineer. <clears throat> uh, we have for you today two uh, purchase contracts for uh, two parcels of right-of-way on our proposed East Powell Road improvement. Uh, we have discussed, or I have discussed these with you uh, previously, and uh, we are recommending approval. Any questions or comments? Huh? So on motion 18-35, Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Resolution number 18-36. In the matter of approving the plat of subdivision for replat of River Rock Farms lot 5259 and 5260. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Uh, <clears throat> River Rock Farms is a small subdivision located off of Orange Road uh, near the Olentangy River, uh, just east of, of Route 315. Uh, this uh, is a re subdivision of two of those lots uh, to reconfigure those lots and uh, this has been approved by all the required county agencies, and we're recommending approval. Discussion? So, questions? Votes. So, on motion 18-36, Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 18-37, in the matter of approving right-of-way work permit summary sheet. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Uh, we had seven permit applications, uh, really nothing out of the ordinary on any of these, so we're recommending approval. Questions, comments, vote? Vote on motion 18-37. Mr. Merrill? Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Next on our agenda is Glenn Marsloff, General Manager of Delaware County, oh, sorry, Delco Water Presentation and Utility Updates. Welcome. Thank you. We look forward to it every year. Skipped it last year. What? Well, it's been that long? Oh, yeah. It's been about months. I think we were talking about the changes in rates or something or something at the last meeting. Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. Probably before the oh, summer season. Right. Introduce yourself. Good morning. Yep, I'm Glenn Marsloff, uh, General Manager CEO of the Delco Water Company, and I'm here just to do a routine update. Uh, we try to do these periodically with uh, elected officials in the areas we serve. Uh, it's not uncommon for the water and wastewater utilities to be associated with those political organizations, but because Delco is separate and independent, we at least like to connect uh, elected officials with their constituents and what we're doing on the, the water side. And clearly, with uh, the wastewater utility being run by the county, there's even more reason for you all to understand where, where we're going with the, with the water utility. So as you know, before the record, uh, we are a member-owned nonprofit cooperative uh, governed by an elected board of 10 members, served our first customers in 74. We're going to be the ninth largest uh, system in the state by population, second largest by service area, and we do serve customers in seven counties. Uh, as a matter of population, the vast majority of those are in Delaware County, but we do serve customers in seven different counties. We like to give a comparison for those aren't familiar with the way our system works with uh, the City of Columbus system. Lots of folks are familiar with the large urban system. Uh, we cover about double 
the area, but with about one tenth, about one eighth the customer count, uh, and over half as much pipeline mileage, right? So when you look at the, the customer density types, it's significantly different. Uh, we also have that peak factor, that seasonal demand that, that Delco deals with that you don't see in some of the larger systems in the state. So map of our system, um, one, two, and three are, are three water treatment plants in southern Delaware County. Number five is a groundwater plant we have in Knox County. One and four are two uh, business offices. And then number six is the Dot Reservoir. Uh, we'll talk about here in just a second. So we still consider ourselves a rural utility. Um, we kind of see the, the difference between a neighborhood and the city of Delaware, and not to say we don't have neighborhoods like that in our system, but a lot of our system looks like the picture on the bottom. Uh, so much less density, uh, requires more infrastructure. Typically that requires a little more cost because of that infrastructure to put that in and pay for that. We do not offer fire protection as a base level of service. That being said, we, we have flushing hydrants, and those are hooked onto by fire departments, and fires are fought with them, but that's not a base uh, service, level of service that we offer. Delco Pacific issues that we have is that high seasonal peak demand and drought tolerance. Uh, we found out in 2012 that we are very susceptible to drought. But fortunately, the big report here today is we think we've got that covered, at least in part, already, and the rest of it's coming very soon. So leads us into the next part of the presentation is our capital report. The Dot Reservoir was finished in 2016 uh, by City of Columbus. Delco purchased 15% interest in this, and it's one of the largest upground reservoirs in the world. Uh, it's going about 10 billion gallons, covering 850 acres in Thompson Township. And we are now at the point where we're ready to take water from that reservoir, but out of uh, the O'Shaughnessy on Home Road. Here's the aerial photo of that. So the new pump station has just uh, been completed, put in service last month. It's, we're still on punch list, but it's substantially complete at this point. So if we needed to use it, we could. The pipeline was com completed by Truco last year, and uh, actually in 20, 2016, and uh, the pump station in 2017 by Peterson Construction. And this is all done in partnership with the uh, Columbus Department of Public Utilities. They gave us the uh, easements and everything to take the water there, which, which of course we're entitled to as part of that DOT project, but they've been easy to work with. I want to talk a little bit about the project, a little bit different than maybe some of the projects you're familiar with. And interesting, at least us engineers in the room, Mike and I at least will be entertained for a couple minutes. Um, <laughs> Here's the site. So the first thing that Peterson did is they went in and they, they dug the basement out, but that ended up being a drilling pitch. They, they dug through the shale, and then they put this micro-tunnel machine on the ground. It's about uh, six foot in diameter there to, to, to drill for a five-foot pipe that's going to go behind it. They take that, put it down in the pit, and basically put it on like almost like a locomotive tracks. And they're going to start drilling underneath the reservoir. So not through the river, but actually underneath it. And then they stick a... Uh, set a pipe on there, metal pipe behind it, steel pipe, and then they'll push that one through, tunnel it through, then they back up the machine, they weld another piece of pipe, and they keep doing that until they get out um, in, of it, in the middle of the river, a couple hundred foot out. Uh, and at that point, we've drilled underneath the, the reservoir and send a drill team out there. Um, they excavate out and find where the, the drill rig is, the microtunnel machine, and they literally put floats on that, float it up the top, and take it away, and then they replace that with this elbow, and above that, this new intake. And that's how we're going to get our water out of the O'Shaughnessy River, or out of the O'Shaughnessy Reservoir. Um, finished construction of the uh, pumping station itself. It's really quite attractive, and i got to give the, the Columbus Department of Public Utilities the credit for that. The, us engineers would not have designed such a nice fit. It, it, it needed to fit their park setting, so we gave them kind of uh, the option to, to make it look the way they wanted to was not as important to us as that thing functioned properly. Uh, this is going to be the Schreiber pumping station. Um, pumps up to 16 million gallons per day of raw water to our uh, upground reservoirs at the Olin Tangier Water Treatment Plant. We're named after Larry Schreiber, who's a longtime uh, board member, retired uh, back in 2011, but served us for 34 years. And actually, his, his first uh, tour of duty was, was door to door volunteering, selling taps even before we served our first customer. So Larry was very important to us. So that's going to bring the source water to our Olin Tangy campus and this Olin Tangy plant. And that gives us the opportunity now to expand this plant uh, in order to provide uh, drought capacity and uh, peak capacity today, but also for growth in the future. And this has already been awarded to building, building crafts uh, out of northern Kentucky. 
at a cost of $15.2 million. And this project is going to take our rated capacity there from 19 to 29 million gallons per day. And when that project's finished, everything will be fixed from 2012. But right now, with the pump station online, we are in such better position. Uh, if, the, if 2018 ended up being a really hot, dry summer, it would take a significant drought to put us in a position any worse than other utilities in the area. So if a drought like that happened, Columbus would be in trouble, West Virginia, you know, it would, be, it would be a much bigger thing. Where in 2012, we were kind of standing alone, trying to get the attention of our customers, uh, where the other utilities were still in good standing. Then you, will you be pumping out of O'Shaughnessy on a need basis or a routine basis? Right now, it's more of an as-needed. Um, typically, the oil and tangy supply is all we need, but if, it's a, if there's a situation where we need to, then we can pump from the O'Shaughnessy. Uh, it's less expensive, obviously, to pump one mile than to pump four miles, so um, that would be our intention to use this on an as-needed basis, but uh, it's there when we need it, and eventually, as our county continues to grow, that demand will go up and just become part of our, our more standard supply rather than uh, that exceptional need. I don't usually talk about some of the more routine projects, but I thought this might be of interest to you. Um, we're trying to do our best to, to, to do the, the best with our existing assets, and it's our hope that all of our elevated tanks uh, will last in perpetuity, and that requires some maintenance. So this year, um, Contupus has been awarded our tank rehab project. The last one they did for us was back uh, in 2013. That's when we the, painted the Orange Road tank, and we put the Delaware County logo on that. We see for us to... Uh, to paint and rehabilitate two tanks, that's $900,000. And we do two tanks every single year. Some years it's over a million, some years it's under. It all depends on the size of the tanks. But significant amount of reinvestment is needed, but uh, we're committed to that to make sure that these assets last as long as possible. Other initiatives we're going to bring you up to speed on. Um, we uh, started doing a source water monitoring program, something we hadn't really done. We, we kind of get to know a little bit more about this, working with City of Columbus on some of these projects. So now, rather than only testing at our plant and in our reservoirs, we're going out into the, to the watersheds of these systems and really understanding better uh, what's in our rivers and you know, maybe what's contributing to that. And that's, we're going to hire our first full-time employee dedicated to that. We've been doing this for a couple of years, but we're actually uh, continuing to uh, increase our level of awareness of, of what's going on in, uh, in the environment. We've had uh, people dedicated part-time to safety for many years, but we've, we've hired our first time uh, our first full-time uh, safety specialist this past year. And just like Jack Smelker retired from the county here a couple of years ago, uh, although in general our staff, you know, we're, we're not in as big a concern as, uh, as our industry is with the retirements. We have uh, key employees leaving, and two of them this year, two, our two longest-serving employees, Sandy Terry, who's our CFO, has been with us since before we built our first customer. She was there to build the first customer, and she'll be billing hopefully through most of this calendar year, too. Uh, and then, uh, and we're getting ready to post a controller job, uh, trying to fill up some, some of her role. And then Steve Francis has been with us 38 years. Uh, and we've already posted, you know, put a couple uh, positions there, including the one that's going to do the, uh, the watershed uh, monitoring uh, program, too. We did a customer satisfaction survey this year, something we haven't done before. Uh, we, we believed that our customers were satisfied, but we never really asked some of these questions. So we're trying to get them more proactive on this. Fortunately, uh, the results were pretty positive, kind of what we hoped, that uh, over 80 percent of our customers said they were either agreed or strongly agreed that they were satisfied with us as a provider. The rest of the results were generally good, but of course you always find out a little bit of information when you do surveys like that. So we're talking about the last time I was here before the commissioners uh, was 2016, and we had just added the conservation tier. I think we were getting ready to add the conservation tier, which went in effect June 1. Talk a little bit about it. So uh, the idea here between the, uh, the conservation tier and these projects we're putting in is to change maybe some of our customer demand patterns. So our master plan shows this trend line of the peak day and the average day. And what it says is by the year 2035, if we don't change the way we grow, then our peak demand might be 53 million gallons per day. And that will require additional plant expansions and maybe additional source water too. So our hope is through various mechanisms, including the conservation tiers, to change that outdoor, outdoor water use pattern. Not that we don't want people to use water outdoors, we just want them to send a price signal that they, they consider uh, other methods and they consider maybe doing it more effectively and efficiently. So our goal is to change that behavior just a little bit to, to shave off some of those peaks so we don't have to expand some of those plants in the future. 
So here's a more illustrative diagram. In 2017, you see our max day was a little bit over, uh, our average day was a little bit over 12 million gallons, and our max day was 21. But all the way back in 2012, we had a record day of almost 31 million. And you see our rate of capacity is 33, and, and the reality is that 31 is about all we can get out the door. So this plan expansion that we're doing today is going to going to fix that. You know, we're going to start construction on that probably in the next month or, or so. And that will get us uh, another 9 million gallons of array capacity, and we'll, we'll fix this issue for the time being. But our hope is that if, if we can make that additional capacity last as long as possible, it's in our best interest of us and our customers. And as you can see, when we look at the domestic use, that average day, we're nowhere need, near needing that expansion. It's just those really peak demand days. And obviously, with a lot of utility, we have to size all our infrastructure based on that peak demand. It's not acceptable to just say, well, we're out. We'll let you know when we have water back in the tank and put you back in service. A little more information on the uh, conservation tier. So these first four years, the conservation tier was not in place. It's just kind of some background information that if it was in place, that was the revenue we would have created. In 2016, uh, we ended up creating just a little bit more, uh, a little over 500,000, and this year a little, little less than uh, well, over 400,000. That's what the, the total amount of that revenue, based on our total revenue, 1.8 percent. And this year, uh, obviously, our fiscal year ends in April, so we don't know exactly what it's going to be, but somewhere in the neighborhood of one and a half percent of that total revenue. It's hard to tell, but it's being effective because there's so many different variables as to customer use. Obviously, the biggest of which is is the weather. But we're hopeful that in the long term that that this method is going to be successful, and we're going to find some folks changing their water use patterns over time. Total customers build, uh, nine and a half was per percent was the baseline. In the last two years, we've had slightly more customers inside that conservation tier. And that means that you had at least one bill that we had used over the 25,000 gallon and hit that. At least one bill with at least one gallon of water that they were charged in that conservation tier. Other things going on with Delco. Um, the Delco Water Fund, we've, we've created this with the foundation here just in the last three or four years. Uh, I'm not going to read through all the charities that we've chosen to, to sponsor corporately this past year, but we, we have spread the money around a little bit. Um, excited about that. We're not real great at marketing, uh, but what we do is we take our little Delco logo and we change it so we have a Welco logo for our, our wellness program, and this is Helpco for our charity and outreach. We're trying to do a better job of getting out in the community. And uh, this is uh, supplies for scholars along with our mobile, fa mobile food pantry. And Flying Horse Farms up in Morrill County, uh, they have a great mission. If you're not familiar with that organization, something you should check out. We serve at the Common Ground Free Store, several other spots. We're, of course, we're in team with uh, water needs throughout the world. Staff only, led, uh, we're always in the top three or four for the walk and Alzheimer's here in the city of Delaware. And three of our prime partners, Delaware Area Career Center, uh, we've used a lot of their students in the past. We've actually started funding a scholarship with them. And both uh, at Stratford and with the Alpha Group, we, uh, we fund a fair amount of their operations through, uh, through work that we're doing with them. So excited about that. In 2016, uh, we became a charter member of the Association of Regional Water Organizations. This is a national trade organization. And depending on how successful I am with, with uh, twisting Mike's arm, you may hear at some point uh, us trying to get the county to join this organization too. But we feel really strongly that regionalizing is in the best interest of our industry. And when I say regionalizing, I'm not suggesting that a city the size of the city of Delaware here isn't able to sustain a water utility indefinitely. But for instance, right now we're in final negotiations with the village of Centerburg, about 500 rooftops there in that, in that town, maybe a little bit less than that. And they're in a position where they were going to have to expand their water plant. It was going to cost them in the neighborhood of $5 million, because we can go in there and save their citizens a lot of money, and we think we provide them a better product. We're large enough to have the both the technical and the financial capacity to do, do a good job for them. And that's, that's the type of relationships that we think uh, could be bettered. And, and whether it's a merger like this one or whether it's, it's somewhere where we're just helping each other out, we think regionalizing is really in the best interest of uh, the water and wastewater industry. Every year we talk about the cooperation with all the various uh, organizations here in the county. Um, we've been working with the regional sewer district. We had a good relationship with, with Tiffany Jenkins while she was the uh, sanitary engineer, but that's even gotten better. Uh, with Mike Fromer. In fact, next month, actually later this month, we have our second uh, coordination meeting where we're getting together roughly 10 staff members from each team and just kind of looking at ways that uh, we can synergize and, and we, can, we can partner to make, make things better for, for our members and for 
for our residents. Um, various other organizations, of course, the villages and townships and those fire departments we talked about. Ultimately, it's about the, sh the shared vision we think we have with the, the county commission and with all the, the public servants, and that's first, public health and safety. Next is affordable, but more than that, value-added services for, uh, for our membership. Reliable infrastructure and a quality product. Uh, we know and work with Bob Lamb regularly if there's ways we can help with economic development and also su successful enterprise for existing businesses. And just that any way we can create synergies is in the best interest of, uh, of everybody. With that, I'd be happy to take any questions that the uh, commissioners might have about what's going on with Delco Water. Uh, Glenn, did you say a city of Delaware, you would expect them to be able to keep their water yeah, we think and remain self-sufficient? If, if it's more than a population of, of four or 5,000, then, okay. then there's probably no reason to think that there's not the economy of scale for them to mm -hmm. keep that going. I don't know if it depends on, you know, the leadership and that kind of stuff, but we're very confident that, you know, Westerville and your Delawares mm -hmm. can operate in perpetuity, but it's the smaller villages, uh, and even smaller than that, there's, you know, there's, there's 52,000 water systems in the United States, and there's 3,000 or so electric utilities. So, wow. trailer parks, um, you've got gas stations, you know, that are out that aren't connected to a central water system. Um, those type of things that, you know, maybe it's just, they're just not gonna be very good at the water industry because that's not what they do. Yes. And if we can fold them in to somebody, uh, here in this area, Delco, but there's, there's, uh, this, this can go on anywhere, everywhere across the country. If we can fold them into a utility, that's what they do primarily. We think it's in the best interest of the country and of ultimately of the, the residents of this country. Are there, is there general interest on the part of these entities? Well, it, of course, it varies. Uh, there's challenges to work through. Uh, you know, Santa Barbara had to make the decision, you know, when you give up your water utility, that there can be challenges with that. And we're, we're very frank about, you know, what Delco is and what Delco isn't, you know. We don't care about annexation. If they choose annex, that's fine. If they don't choose annex, you know, we, we are annexation neutral. We're just there to serve water. That's all we do. That's, that's all we want to be in the business of doing. We don't want to get into those other conversations. Um, but in their case, it, was, it made so much sense for their residents that that would override any other concerns that they, that they had. But uh, it, it varies significantly. We are getting, uh, that, that organization uh, it is nationally based. Uh, and we spend a lot of time in D.C. and it's getting a lot, much, a lot more interest at the federal level from both USDA and the, uh, the US EPA. Uh, and we, th we think we're getting some, some quality face time with our elected officials too in, in Washington, but you know, there's only so much money to go around and we don't know where that's gonna be. And uh, one thing that, that we've been really adamant about is at least make regionalization an equal or preferred al alternative than just giving money to, to entities that, that are having issues with their operations, which has right. oftentimes been and the way they fixed issues in the past is, well, this is how much it's going to cost to fix the problem. You don't have the money, we'll help you out. And there may be other opportunities. Yeah, um, I've, I've long been a customer and want to compliment Appreciate you. That. And I would be in the very satisfied category. Um, you guys do a great job. Um, and I've long been a proponent of regionalization. Um, you know, the smaller, and Mike and I have this conversation about the smaller sewer districts, smaller water districts. I mean, it really, there really are economies of scale and, and service, quality of service, and so on. Um, how, how, a question I have, uh, you, you touched on it, and that is, how do how do our how does Delco water rates compare to Columbus? Generally, they're uh, they're more, uh, not significantly more. We're, we're one of the lower in the region when you look at all the the suburbs and everything, because most of the suburbs, they, you know, there's a, some kind of additional charge over and above what City Columbus charges. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, say, so like, for a typical customer, I think, uh, for water, water only, for Columbus is, is in the neighborhood of $25, and for us would be in the neighborhood of 32 to 35 somewhere in there. Okay. okay. So it's, it's more, but it's not a lot more. Uh, we're big enough that, that we're able to keep it pretty affordable. Uh, our, uh, for, for the more challenged customers, you know, a lot of the ones we're always concerned about is, is uh, maybe elderly folks that are on a fixed income. Uh, our minimum bill is $11.85. So uh, that comes with 1,500 gallons of water. So for, for the most part, we, you know, we think that's in the affordable range. Uh, certainly for the type of service they're getting provided, it's, it's, uh, we think it's a good value still. Uh, yeah, well, again, appreciate the update. And, and I, I assume your, your plans include the growth projections that are expected to happen 
within the, your territory, not just Delaware County. But yeah, uh, our, our, so, so the majority of our growth, we, we do anticipate to be in Delaware County. Um, certainly there's some in some of the other counties, but it tends to be, uh, aside from areas directly adjacent to the interstate, it tends to be just, you know, your single lot info homes for the most part, whereas Delaware County, we're seeing a lot more, uh, you know, subdivided neighborhoods like the ones you've seen a couple today already between Mr. Riley and Mr. Fromer. So we tend to see uh, a lot more of that here. So by far the majority of our growth is here in, in Delaware County. Okay. Another question. Thank you for the presentation the update. Go ahead. Well, go ahead Mark. well, I just wanted to thank you, uh, Glenn. You do a great job. Delco, very happy to have Delco Water. I had a private water company and as uh, EPA regulations uh, tightened up and it just made so much sense to switch to Delco and I know everyone in my neighborhood is very pleased so thank you I'm glad you're welcome thank you <laughs> um, you know Glenn uh, you know you touched on it I think that uh, as the county continues to work you know economic development and through the finance authority um, when you look at job ready sites, um, in addition to sewer, the, not only the domestic water, but the fire protection is a, a very important, you know, aspect. So I know the, the finance authority was going to have, uh, you know, Delco come in and talk, but they'll be a very, very important part of that discussion. Uh, you can't put in manufacturing buildings if you can't sprinkle, uh, the, the building. So I, I just want to make that comment that we need to, to make sure that we include you as a very strategic partner in that. So uh, the, the, the other item, you, you, you touched on a very, uh, your, your picture of your, your intake is, is great. That will be the number one fishing <laughs> spot for people around. You'll see a lot of boats around there. But um, with our lower side of plant discharge just a, a short bit upstream, uh, there has, there's going to be some uh, in increased interest because before the only water uh, intake was it would flow all the way down through the city of Columbus to their Dublin Road plan. Um, as you know, Columbus also purchased the site across the uh, uh, the river from where their intake is going to be. So um, <clears throat> our plant has, was given a 10 total nitrogen uh, discharge limit, and you can see Glenn is having two at, at his top uh, of his uh, plant. So. Um, we'll be doing a lot of collaboration and coordination with them having that watershed person that's taking those testing will really help us understand because when we talk about limits and stuff, everybody, there's not a lot of data out there right now because all the infrastructure is new. So just, just to kind of let you guys know, that's the, uh, the impact and, and how we, you know, collaborate and coordinate on stuff. So. Glenn, I thank you very much. I also thank you for your service. You also serve on the Morpsey Board on behalf of the county commissioners, and uh, we That's appreciate right. that very much. And uh, uh, I think we have a great partnership between the, the two groups, and, uh, uh, and I always enjoy the presentations and the updates. Yeah. I know water, not only availability of water, but volume of water could be important down the road, if, depending on who could come to our county when. So. Uh, so uh, there'll be a lot of reasons and things to explore as we move forward. So. Yes, yeah, so we're certainly planning for uh, well beyond my career. You know, how are we going to continue to sustain this this county's growth and, and the need for water? So we're we're continue to look far out, uh, make sure that we're uh, we're ahead of the game. We're, we're in a we're comfortable position regardless of how fast we grow and how we grow for the next couple decades. But uh, always having to look even further out than that. And, and also, I want to thank you all for uh, reappointing me to the Morpsey Board. It's something that. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to serve on, and I, th I think I can do a good job representing the county. I do have a background in transportation, so I understand Mr. Riley's and Mr. Bowserman's needs, amongst everything else that, that, that Morpsey does for, for the region. Thank you all. Thanks for Thank the you. opportunity to come present with you today. Thank you. Keep Thank up the good work. Mr. Fromer. Under administrative reports, um, the only thing I have is we are – with the, the commissioner's uh, approving of the track it software at the end of 2016. I just wanted to let you know we are coordinating a internal kickoff meeting um, for this uh, this program and we're targeting the second week in, second to third week in January to get the, the stakeholder, the county stakeholders together, which is county engineer, uh, the regional sewer district, uh, economic development, code compliance, and uh, our IT staff and, and uh, starting to roll out that um, 
that program is going to, you know, guide the workflow for a lot of the developmental, the development submittals, you know, working through the county. So just kind of want to give you that heads up. We're, we're in that uh, kickoff mode, and hopefully in a, a few months we'll have some real <coughs> positive progress to report back. So that's it. Um, just a couple things. Um, went to the CCAO Taxation and Finance Committee meeting on Tuesday, and it was very interesting. Um, there were a number of legislative initiatives that uh, are in various stages of the process, um, a lot of which probably aren't going to go anywhere. But one that's kind of interesting, and I assume, Rob, you're probably aware of this, is House Bill 415. Uh, Representative Greenspan is the one that sponsored it, um, but what they're proposing to do is allocate 50 percent of the state's surplus to roads, uh, to be allocated back to roads in, uh, in the state, uh, back to counties to be <coughs> allocated to roads back in the state, to road improvements, road reconstruction, whatever. Um, and it can, given that this year, there's not a likelihood of much of a surplus. It's probably not going to mean much money if it passes. But uh, in the future, you know, as things get better, hopefully it could be some, some money. And what's, what's interesting is there's no – the basis of allocation is center lane miles. It's not some economic, uh, you know, factor. It's, it's center lane miles. So uh, it's very encouraging that we would actually get a fair share of, of that allocation. Um, looks like uh, Rob's so going to have a call for time on this. That, yeah. I, I really appreciate you bringing that up, uh, Commissioner Benton. I, if, I, if I may, I, uh, I wanted to add uh, that uh, uh, the County Engineers Association did uh, speak uh, to the uh, committee, uh, the House Committee, on, the, uh, on that issue, on that proposed bill. Uh, we are uh, certainly in favor of, of the notion of that uh, additional funding uh, and that it would be um, uh, spread to all the agencies in the state. Uh, the, there are, uh, we're afraid, maybe some unintended con consequences of that uh, in that uh, it wouldn't necessarily be a reliable uh, funding stream because it would fluctuate so greatly with the state. Down. Right. So um, while the, we think the intent is good, um, we hope there's a way to manage that in a more uh, consistent basis, if, if nothing else. But uh, we, we certainly appreciate the, the interest and the support at the State House. Yeah, it was. It was. It was very well received. The, attack, the committee unanimously endorsed it to be supported by CCAO. Um, so we'll, we'll see where it goes. Um, I think our center lane miles are roughly two percent of the state's, something two two and a half percent. I was doing the math, and I think it's in that range. So if the surplus is last year, the surplus was 170 million. They would allocate 85 million. We could get. You know, million dollars, a couple, you know, million and a half, something like that. If, if now this year again, they're not expecting much of a surplus, so uh, wouldn't wouldn't end up with much probably. But um, so anyway, interesting legislation. Um, this other thing was just that we're going to a t TID meeting to understand more about transportation improvement districts uh, at noon today at Morpsey before the Morpsey meeting at one thirty. Um, uh, interesting idea, you know, again, transportation improvement district. I know, Rob, you're going as well. Is Chris going? He's not going. He's not going. So anyway, that's all I got. Oh, um, I was just going to mention everybody should get their tea times because it's going to be busy this afternoon. So that's all I got. I thought you were going to be at Morphsy this afternoon. Well, I will, but there's, there's, it doesn't <laughs> it, it ends, it ends before dusk. Good clarification there. Oh, God. Uh, I, um, I opened my National Association of County newsletters this morning, and unfortunately bad news about Ohio, uh, that one of the headlines was fueled by opioid epidemic, foster care numbers soar in Ohio, and, um, there was a report released last month by the Public Children's Services Association of Ohio. That's a statewide membership organization for county children's services agencies. And a thousand more Ohio children spent the holidays in foster care this season compared to last year. You know, very, very 
sad. Um, and there is a quote from Suzanne Delaney, executive director of CCAO, and she said the number of children in need of county services as a result of the opiate epidemic is staggering. So just not good news, but we've got to be aware of what's going on and deal with it. And, and we're certainly trying on the local level here in the county to do that with our, with our cooperation with the prosecutor's office and stepping up and the judges, the sheriff, and, and uh, our corrections officials. And that's it. I have nothing to add other than Morpsey after the TED meeting, which I know you and I are going. I don't know if Commissioner Lewis is going or not. No, I've got an emergency uh, management. The policy meeting, meeting follows that at 1.30. Right. So. Uh, so we'll have a busy afternoon. So uh, with that, I do believe we have need for executive session. We do. Resolution number 18-38. The matter of adjourning into executive session for consideration of employment compensation of a public employee or public official to consider the purchase of property for public purposes for pending or imminent litigation. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 18-38. Mr. Benton. Aye. Mr. Miro. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. We're now in executive session. Right. Resolution number 18-39, in the matter of adjourning out of executive session. So moved. I'll second that motion. Okay. Discussion vote. Vote on motion 18-39. Mr. Murrell? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mrs. You? Lewis? We would like to adjourn out. <laughs> With that, we, uh, uh, we're now out of executive session. And we will recess until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, which is the date of? The January 12th. January 12th. 12. 9 o'clock, January 12th. We will recess until then. With that, we are recessed. For the purpose of going into a recess. Recess. We don't have to. It's not special. It's a continuation. Yeah. <laughs>